Welcome to our uh, fifth edition of EDI interview. I'm Marta Surzanu from Romanian Energy Center, and uh, today we will discuss with uh, representatives of the Sweden's largest uh, technical research and learning institution, Royal uh, Institute of Technology. Therefore, we have the Strategy and Learning Director and CEO of uh, KTH Executive School, Aneta Rinman. Uh, Ms. Rinman, welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. And we also have Stefan Oslion, Professor and Vice President of Global Relations at uh, KTH. Mr. Oslion, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, in this session, we will address topics like digitalization of the energy uh, sector, uh, technical education and EDIS blueprint. Uh, therefore, um, Mr. Oslund, uh, your teaching experience summarizes approximately 30 years. Uh, therefore, how do you perceive the digitalization of the energy sector? Well, uh, it's it's a uh... It's one of these typical questions or, or problems we have when you try to develop a system and, and merge different uh, knowledges. Um, the energy sector, and, and I'm a, myself a, like a power engineer, so I know the basics of that one. It's very important that you have the basic fundamental knowledge and you need to be pretty skilled in, in, in the physics behind it. On the other hand, you're supposed to use tools which are, are, are uh, developing very quickly, like uh, the digital tools you can, you can uh, understand. You have AI, you have a lot of aspects that, that come into this. So the, the, the conflict of time is always to have both. And, and, and uh, uh, sometimes people tend to understand, they come from one of the backgrounds and learn the other ones, but most people don't. They don't have time to do that. So finding this quick mix of, of, of approaching the topic from two sides, uh, the energy side, physics side, and the digital side is very challenging, actually. Mm -hmm. And what uh, do you consider that uh, the challenges of the Sweden teaching uh, system um, that mm -hmm. was facing or is facing in the, in the present um, when the course is moved to online in this uh, pandemic period? Uh, online teaching is, is working acceptably well. Uh, you, you, you can have lectures, you can have seminars, uh, everything looks very neat uh, and, and, and uh, it looks like it works very well, and it does. But uh, teaching is, is growing, you, you grow as a person. You, you develop your skills. You, you, some people understand very quickly. Some people understand very a little bit slower. And you need this kind of discussion with people. You need need to meet people. So whatever we say about digit online teaching, for instance, you will have to have a certain amount of, of interaction with people, and and allow yourself to make mistakes. Uh, in in the dig digital world, uh, it's it's very much um, well prepared. Uh, uh, but but it's pretty boring. So there are also benefits, but also disadvantages. The benefit is that it works. Uh, it, it, it's actually a, a functioning system. Uh, mm -hmm. But but uh, teaching, learning, and developing a people a, a person is so much more than the the pure tool to to deliver the knowledge. It's it's actually understanding conceptual things. And, and, and that is different for each student. So there is no one solution fits all here. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Riedman, the digitalization uh, previously addressed by uh, Mr. Roslund, it's a transition process. And based on your experience in strategy and learning, uh, what are the priorities, maybe at the European level, uh, in the technical education system? Well, so the organization that I represent provide learnings for professionals. Therefore, my answer is based on the needs we see in industry. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, there is the fast development of powerful technologies, as Mr. Östlund mentioned, for instance, AI, which is critical to be on top of and have sufficient competence in. Then again, on the other hand, as we all know, the energy system is undergoing a transformation with rapid development or, for example, intermittent energy, new solutions based on storage possibilities and the need to become more sustainable and meet the targets of the Paris Agreement, 
all of this without compromising a secure and robust grid and energy system. So where previously efficiency of the grid and in the distribution were key, now maybe flexible small-scale solutions in more distributed and multi-autonomous systems are becoming more and more important. Thus, the need for this kind of competence is also critical and a true challenge since it implies completely new ways of working and organizing operations. Mm -hmm. So yes, indeed, it is, it is a challenge. Um, you also are involved in uh, a DE work package G5 uh, related to the blueprint. Uh, so I want to ask you to share your vision in a successful framework. So Work Package 5 is still in an initial phase and the whole idea is, of course, to collaboratively create a successful framework or blueprint. And uh, so far, a process for designing and delivering educational programs have been created and discussed from which uh, we intend to uh, derive the method to apply. However, the team here at KTH envisioned developing a framework that consists of templates for some 10 to 12 educational programs in different formats, addressing competence and skills needs at different levels within the European energy sector. And the reason why my colleagues and I are thrilled to be part of the EDI project is this focus on the current competence and skills needs driven by digitalization. And that these needs will be analyzed in a structured granular way giving both industry and educators a shared view. And of course, we strive for and hope that the framework will be widely adopted and support continuous cooperation between industry and educators. Yes, you're right. Um, after we finalize the blueprint, this is the intention to, to have a mass adoption and uh, a great results. Um, and now uh, I want to shift a little bit the focus uh, to a more um, rig to a less rigid um, um, aspect, and uh, I want you to let me ask you about your hobbies. <laughs> so, Mr. Ostlund, what are you doing when you are not working? Well, uh, I'm very. My Swedish means pretty conventional engineer in the way that I I like sports. Uh, I play a lot of golf. Uh, I, I enjoy food, uh, I enjoy wine very much, I'm a collector. Uh, so, so, you know, this is very typical um, people, uh, some people in, in the engineering world, when they grow up, so to say. Do you have a wine recommendation? Oh, always. <laughs> no, uh, not, not, in this con not in this context, perhaps. I'm, mm -hmm. very I'm actually very fond of German wines, so, so, so for a European perspective, that sounds good, doesn't it? Nice. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Ritman, uh, what do you do when you are not working? Oh, well, Mr. Östlund gave us the whole picture. I was thinking of singling out one. Uh, my learning grounds and my passion uh, is horses and horseback riding. And uh, I get a lot of inspiration for uh, learning uh, there. I like the way Mr. Eslam talked about how it is about growing people and, and developing, so um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll stop there. Mm -hmm. You both are very authentic. This is a, a nice uh, way of saying it. So uh, thank you both for uh, being here. This is all, was a pleasure and uh, thank you all for, uh, for watching us and see you next time.